Hi, welcome to another episode of the Mike Page Doodle Club. I'm Mike Page, and today we're going to be drawing a French Bulldog. So grab some paper, a pencil, pen, whatever you'd like to draw with, and let's get right to it. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. The important thing is that you make your mark. Park Street Books is proud to sponsor the Mike Page Doodle Club. Find them locally at 504 Main Street, Medfield, Mass. Open Monday to Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Or visit parkstreetbooks.com. No matter where you are, that's parkstreetbooks.com. All right, to start this French Bulldog, I'm going to make the top of the head, which will be uh, for a French Bulldog, uh, or if you were drawing a boxer or a dog like that, you're going to want kind of very angular squared lines. Um, so while some dogs are very rounded and soft looking, a French Bulldog still has some uh, angular kind of rigid lines to it. So for the top of the head, it's going to be like that. And then almost like you're drawing a stop sign, we're going to kind of come down on both sides like that. I made these lines a little bit wider than I wanted, but we can adjust as we go. Uh, then I'm going to come down and in slightly, and I'm going to try to keep things fairly symmetrical. Then we're going to come back out just a smidge. Now, right in the middle here is where the nose is going to go on a French Bulldog. So I'm going to make a very smushed rainbow shape going across, and then I'm going to come down on both sides. Then in the middle of that, I'm going to make a small vertical line coming down, and from the sides, we're going to come over and then up in a very skinny oval. And then kind of a pointed bottom to it like that. And this section here is going to kind of come out like that. And I'm trying to somewhat shade with this pen. It's a gel pen, so it doesn't really want to be used to shade. But if you're careful, you can uh, go lightly enough that it'll shade a little bit. Um, and we're going to have some shadows down here, where the wrinkle is on the face. Uh, next, we're going to come down with the uh, cheeks. And then, it wouldn't be a French Bulldog without some jowls. So we're going to come down a bit like that. And then over, and over, and up. Next I'm going to make some eyes, and they're going to be kind of rainbow shaped on top. Kind of like that on this side. And about the same thing on the other side. Now, if you've watched a number of these episodes, you're probably laughing at me right now because I always say if you're right-handed, draw the left one first. That way you can see what you've done when you go to do the next one. If you're left-handed, draw the right one first so you can see what you've done when you do the other one. Uh, having said that, I just did it backwards. I find that I often do it backwards when I'm recording these. Uh, because I'm thinking about talking and I'm not thinking about the smart way of doing it. Hopefully you can learn from my mistakes when I make them. And it'll save you a little bit of hassle. That's definitely one of those tricks that the more you draw, the more you'll learn stuff like that, that what, what order it makes sense to do things in. 
Um, I'm going to round this eye off a little bit more. I made this one a little too much like a human eye. Um, I think just out of uh, habit of drawing people. But right now we're drawing a French Bulldog, so we don't want it to have a human eyeball. That would be weird. Uh, and then we're doing kind of a smushed U shape, like a bowl on this side. Um, so you don't want a perfect circle. You don't want a football. You want a French Bulldog's eye. So you kind of gradually work towards the shape that you want. Now, inside of this, we're going to have the bulging eyes of a French Bulldog. Now, this is important. I just made this line. The tendency when people draw eyes is to make uh, almost parentheses that if you continued the line would be making like a football going up and down. That's not what you want when you're drawing eyes. So if this line is like this, the next line uh, for the pupil should be parallel to this, but we want them to uh, trick the mind into making a circle. So even if an eye is at an angle that it almost looks like an oval, um, that's not the way eyes really work, and you need to make sure that lines stay parallel and that they would, if they continued, make a circle. Um, or sometimes as you're drawing it, they might appear to be an oval. But what you don't want is a line here and a line here that are curved way up to a point way off in space. You want lines that would make a circle. That was a lot of words to explain that, but I hope you get the point. Um, that's one of those things that you might not know how to do it right away, but if you do it the wrong way and you see it the wrong way, then you'll understand. Um, so right now you can see that this curve and this curve are parallel to the circle that's forming here. And this is the same if you're drawing a human eye. Um, and the important thing is, if you run into an eyelid, that's fine. Uh, if you look at somebody's, if you're looking at a friend's eyes, or a photo of a, of a person, their iris here intersects with the eyelid, it's supposed to do that. Um, you don't have to fit the entire thing inside of the eyelid. In fact, it looks really weird if you try to. Uh, now I'm going to add a little bit of shading around the top edge here. Uh, so right in here, along that edge of the iris, I'm just kind of coming up and towards the eyelid a little bit, like that. That will give the eyes a little bit more realism. And then I'm going to add an eyelid up here. And our Frenchie is going to want some ears for sure. That's one of the very defining characteristics of a French Bulldog, is these great ears. You want to kind of pay attention to the way a dog's ears wrinkle and fold. Um, these ears actually look a little too skinny. But I think I'm actually going to cheat this and bring them out just a tiny bit more. Like that, that's kind of more the look that I was going for. I just missed it. Uh, then the 
inner part of the ear would come up like that. Now that I have these two mistakes here, I'm going to come through and scribble over them real quick. Fill in this spot. Luckily, this dog's ears are black. So while I'm kind of cheating here, this eventually would have been dark anyway. So it's not the end of the world. And if you're drawing in a pencil, even better. You can erase. But I do apologize if you were following along and I messed you up too. That's never good. That's not what I'm supposed to do. This dog's name is Luna, and she belongs to my friends Paul and Natursia that I stayed with in the Azores. If you've seen any of the episodes the last couple weeks, you, you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, when is he going to stop talking about the Azores? Um, probably after this episode. I think this will be it, and then I'll have my fill of Azores episodes, and then I can move on. Uh, but I thought it would be fun to do a few episodes based on things that I saw on that trip. Um, and this dog, Luna, was just a really cool dog. And I knew within five minutes of being at that house that Luna was definitely going to be drawn at some point. Um, I'm just making this part a little bit boxier. I mentioned at the beginning that... Um, French Bulldogs are typically kind of, it's funny because they're very squatty, but they're typically kind of angular and slightly squared off. They're somewhere between very muscular and, and very uh, squishy. And right now it looks kind of goofy, but I still need to add some uh, color to it. So I'm just going to do this very quickly with a sharpie um, and try to imply as much detail as I can. Uh, when you want to imply detail, it's good to just go quickly and don't worry about every last little thing. Just try to get the idea of it. Um, so I'm going to be kicking the sharpie out quite a bit for this stretch. Um, most of this dog's face is black. I probably will not be coloring every last bit of it black because then you would lose all of the detail. Um, so you kind of look for highlights and features that need to stay, and then you work around that. Um, but there are sort of those weird lip splotches and stuff. And so I'm going to try to imply some of that without making every single line that needs to be on this dog. Uh, if I was making one of my dog portrait ornaments that I make, I would be spending a lot longer on this. Uh, but since this is a quick drawing, I will only be spending a few more minutes on Luna. If you have a dog at your house, I would highly encourage you to try drawing him or her. Um, if you're just getting started, I would definitely recommend, if your dog is sleeping, try drawing your dog while it is asleep. Um, but don't spend too, too long on the drawing. So only give yourself, if you're just starting out, you're going to want more time. Um, and that's fine, but set a timer or something and only limit yourself, like, I've got five minutes to draw my dog. Uh, even better if you limit yourself to 30 seconds, but I know when you're just starting out, 30 seconds feels way too short to try to draw a dog. Um, but the reason it's nice to do very quick drawings is uh, you, obviously they don't take much time, 
and you make whatever mistakes you're going to make in a very quick time frame, uh, then you're able to go in later on and spend longer on a drawing once you kind of understand how your dog is, um, or if you're drawing a person or whatever. Um, but the faster you do the drawing, the quicker you make the mistakes, and the quicker you see what is right and what's wrong. Uh, and it's definitely helpful to go from there. If you spend 20 minutes drawing your dog the first time, and it, move, it gets up and moves halfway through it, you're going to be very frustrated. But if you only spent 20 seconds and it gets up and moves, now as soon as it settles back down again, you do another drawing for 20 or 30 seconds, um, and you can uh, get it done. It is definitely more frustrating drawing from life, uh, because without fail, no animal wants to cooperate when you're trying to draw them. Um, and for that matter, if you're drawing a person, people never cooperate either. Um, if you think I'm lying, have it, ask a friend to sit still for five minutes. Not, not even all that long, but it is very hard. When you know you can't move, it's a very long time. And if somebody knows you're drawing, they very slowly do this. Because they think they are only moving their eyes, but their whole head slowly turns towards you because they can't help it. They want to see how your drawing's coming out. Uh, and if you start drawing them from this angle and then they turn their head to this angle, uh, they are not going to look like a person when you are done. And in fairness, that's not your fault. That's kind of their fault. That's why it's usually a lot easier to work from a photograph. Uh, if you want to take photos of your dog to draw, go for it. That's definitely the easiest way to do it. Um, although I would recommend trying those quick drawings, the gesture drawings, uh, because you can definitely learn a lot from doing real quick sketches. I don't love the way this looks in Sharpie, to be honest. I'm used to doing wood burnings of dogs, and in, in marker, it is not the same thing at all. I'm, I'm used to really taking my time and putting in a lot of detail, uh, and then you really kind of capture the dog's essence and personality, and not so much with, with that Sharpie there. Now I'm just trying to fix up some of the details that were skimmed at over. And again, shading with a gel pen is not the easiest thing in the world, but if you're careful and you have a steady hand and you can go lightly, um, they'll usually cooperate just enough. Uh, right there, I was pushing down too hard. The ink wasn't coming, and I tried to get a little bit more ink to flow. Uh, that was bound to happen, because I just said that they'll usually cooperate. And that's Murphy's Law. Now I have several lines that are too dark there. Whoops. And Luna's ears are very black. And I think I'm just going to leave this very thin trace line there, where the outer fold of the ear meets the inside of the ear. Another line right there.
Luna was funny at breakfast every morning. The second the Tercia got out of her chair, Luna would hop up into the chair and would not give that seat up. So the Tercia would come back and not have a chair. But Luna would be sitting there very proudly in the chair. Something great about a dog sitting at a dining room table. If you're a dog person, I guess if you don't like dogs, it would be worst case scenario, but who doesn't like dogs? So the funny thing is I was talking earlier about doing gesture drawings as like good practice and stuff. Uh, this, I can guarantee you this drawing of Luna would have come out better had I done this as a two minute drawing um, and not tried to worry about every detail, just block it in real quickly. Um, I think I would have gotten the shapes a little better. Um, and that's the funny thing about drawing. Sometimes you nail it and sometimes you miss by that much, sometimes you miss by that much, uh, and you have to go in and, and try it again and hope that you get it right the next time. Uh, the important thing is that you keep trying and you don't give up on it. Uh, if you give up, then you'll never get to where you're trying to get to, um, and that doesn't matter if you're talking about drawing or football or lacrosse or cooking, whatever it is. Um, you have to put in the practice to get where you're trying to be. All right, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed drawing Luna along with me. Uh, tune in again next time for another episode of the Mike Page Doodle Club, and I'll see you then. Have a great day. Park Street Books is proud to sponsor the Mike Page Doodle Club. Park Street Books is an independent children's book and toy store. With nothing electronic in the store, Park Street Books encourages kids to read, play, and unplug. Find them locally at 504 Main Street, Medfield, Mass. Open Monday to Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Or visit parkstreetbooks.com no matter where you are. That's parkstreetbooks.com.